It was at this race one year ago that one of the most popular drivers in the sport, Vlad Doty, received paralyzing injuries in this melee. He takes court to the wall, court smacks the wall very hard. For the green flag with 30 laps to go, the green flag is out. And this start looks like a parade lap before a breast. Jeff Gordon takes the early lead in the flat car number six. Wayne Hammond out of Florida in the blue number 66 runs second. And moving up into third position is Chuck Gurney. And you can see Gordon right there is dirt tracking through turns three and four. And Hammond takes over the lead. Wayne Hammond from Florida will lead. Midway, lap number seven, coming through turn number two the last time. Young Jeff Gordon put the heat on Wayne Hammond, 17-year-old versus 26-year-old Hammond. And as I mentioned to you about three laps ago, I didn't think that Hammond had the experience to win here on this track. Hammond's a little bit loose. That's why he's getting a little high. They have closed in on Jeff Gordon. Gordon has let Fry and Hammond get away. And now Gurney in the red 21. We're back inside with him. And right behind Gurney is Rich Mulker. They're going after Jeff Gordon. This is the battle for Gurney. It's going to be a tough pass because if Jeff doesn't let him get by on the outside, I don't think he can get by on the, on the inside as good as Rich is working on the inside. So Rich may make both of these guys in one pass. So let's see how Jeff Gurney handles this. He looks inside of Jeff Gordon. Even though the picture pauses momentarily, this is a live shot for you. That's simply a, a transmission from inside the race car going back to our broadcast facilities here on site and you are looking at a live picture of Chuck Gurney going to the inside of the number six car of Jeff Gordon and Gurney squirms coming down the front stretch he holds his line you see Vogler standing right behind him, waiting for something to happen and Gurney sticks on the inside now you know I'm real surprised that he's, he got he got by but uh, it looked like Jeff was just getting a little bit loose and then it started to push the car's not working real good Five laps are in the books. Uh, cars out of race. Jeff Newman, Tony Elliott, that 27-year-old car is dropped out, as has Greg Staub and Jack Hewitt. They put a lap on Jeff Gordon. The blue car will set it up for you. Just four laps. formation for the start of tonight's 30-lap main event. 
the starting lineup for tonight's Jolly Rancher Hardy's Deluxe Racing Series here at Indianapolis Raceway Park is next. On the pole in car number nine, the winner of the semi feature, Stan Fox, and the outside, a heat race winner, Donnie Jones, never a career feature winner in USAC. In row number two, the cars are number 7R and 93. Nick Fanaro Jr., almost a winner two weeks ago. In the third row, Jeff Gordon in car number four, and new track record holder, Don Schilling in car number 21S. In the fourth row, Jack Calabrese, he won here a year ago, and Dan Drynan in car number 33. In row number five, Doug Wright from nearby Purdue University and Russ Gamester, the current points leader. In the sixth row, side by side, are Mark Dismore, the former go-kart champion, and Johnny Parsons in car number six. In row number seven, Steve Lutshaw, the home builder on the inside and former national champion and seven-time national kingpin, Mel Kenyon flanks him. In the eighth row, the cars are numbered 85 and 97, Jim Hettinger and Michael Lang from here in the Indianapolis area. In the ninth row, another former national midget champion, Tom Bigelow and Don Tyler in the black gold numeral, car number 98. In the 10th row, 19th and 20th starting position, cars numbered 9 and 9, Brett Poole and Richard Myrie from Cleveland. In the 11th row, in another number 9 is Brett Poole and Mark Gerke in car number 74. And in the 12th and final row, 23rd and 24th starting positions, Rich Vogler and John Murphy. And Vogler really has his work cut out for him. Steve, can he do it? He can do it, and it's going to be one heck of a ride. And we're going to see it all on this entire camera, right like this. This will be unique. We'll ride with you and watch Vogler as he tries to pick up as much ground as he possibly can. The green flag is up. Don Jones gets a great start. Nice shot from Vogler. You can see just how tight it is back there. Look at the munchkin right in front of him. Listen to the throttle work. You can tell exactly how he's, how he's pushing the throttle by the sound of the engine. Lap number one, Donnie Jones, the leader. Rich Volker, about 20th position. Meanwhile, up front, we still have a great duel going on. There are now three of them in that contest for the lead position. That is Don Schilling trying to get the inside line in that maroon number 21. The red car has moved into the picture. That is young Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon has won here within the last month and a half. Now, we have to think about tires in a race like this. Everyone's running as hard as they possibly can every lap. And the tires are going to become a situation. Oh, oh there, there's one smoking right there on that was the 93 Mahoney. car in Mahoney, yeah. Rich Vogler is now 11. Nine laps of 30 are down. What a tremendous duel up front. It's Donnie Jones, originally out of Oklahoma, now living in the Indianapolis area. Jim Mahoney darts down to the inside, smokes the tires as he gets on the brakes. And Mahoney spins. And he spins right up in front of traffic. Mahoney comes to a stop. The yellow flag is out and everybody gets by. Oh, what a well, good break. Too bad. You know, he, he was fast enough, but he was frustrated. Couldn't get by. Young Jeff Gordon, the high school graduate of two months ago, is third. And Jeff Calabrese is running fourth. If you saw where Schilling was running, he is so high on the racetrack. He is where you should be to run as fast as he's going. If nothing happens, and there's Gordon. Gordon takes over second, Steve. He has second, but I'll tell you, I don't think he can catch Schilling. He may, but I would not bet on it. Don Schilling continues to lead. He has about a straightaway lead over the second running Jeff Gordon. That is Schilling. Brand new track record holder tonight, a potent Pontiac. And you can see the differential between first and second place. That is Brett Poole that they're putting a lap on right now. That red and white number nine. Second running, here comes Gordon and Stan Fox. The white car keeps creeping into the screen. He is third. White car with the orange helmet. I was trying to keep the car as straight as I could, and uh, it just didn't work. Big battle for the lead, a lead change. Let's go back to racing. Well, Jeff Gordon has come from virtually nowhere. He was at least a straightaway behind. It seemed like when we started that interview, Schilling has all of a sudden slowed dramatically. Your uh, call. Well, it has to be the right rear tire has just gone away, and, and he's just the car's hanging loose. And there's Jeff taking to take the white flag. Uh, an excellent drive, going to win another race. Now, he, you know, he didn't start up front. He started, uh, where did he Jeff start? Gordon started in fifth position, fifth the inside position. of row number three. And he has won a race this year already here at IRP. But Jeff Gordon, surprised, has taken over a late lead. No surprise, really. You know, a kid with his talent, as good as he's run here, uh, it's not a surprise, but you're, you know, didn't think it would happen. Jeff Gordon. Pulls one out of the hat, 
and it looked like Schilling was uh, off to the races, as you would say. He had the entire night to himself, a brand new track record. He won his heat easily. He had a he had built a great lead here in the main event, and Jeff Gordon, you can see how excited he is. The young 18-year-old driver has won for the second time here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Schilling goes back live from indianapolis raceway park in victory lane the great part of a youngster winning is the exuberance when he pulls into victory lane congratulations uh, you won here before but a great victory this evening was it a matter of sizing up the competition waiting till late to make the pass oh man i never i never thought i'd catch him and boy when i did you know i just i knew i could get him i was just i was too afraid that white flag was going to come out and i was never going to get him but um you know i i end up getting them and, and the car is working great it just really came on there at the end i mean the car is just working beautiful you know and i just thank everybody that's helped me out vp racing fuels rc cola harold supermarket and uh you know all the rest of hoosier tires thank you all well he has a world of experience for a 17 year In the meantime, Bob Ciccone and Eddie Horn were fighting it out for third with four laps to go when Horn drove too deep into three and ran over Ciccone's rear wheel. After bouncing off the wall, Horn's car came to rest in the middle of the track where it was drilled by Mel Kenyon. When it became evident that Horn was critically injured and the rescue efforts would take some time, the race was red flagged with Vogler declared the winner. And uh, I must have hooked a tire on the car in front of me and it got everything started evidently and after that they said another car hit me and uh, you know I really don't have any rec recollection of that uh, they said I have a broken hip and uh, a fractured skull and a lot of bruises you know everywhere on my body but uh, I just like to say we'll be back as soon as we can Thursday Thunder continues from Claremont, Indiana, the Indianapolis Raceway Park, where we are live, the Loctite Chris Liner Van Sprint Cars, the Hardy's Deluxe Racing Series from Claremont. Well, good evening, everyone. Normally, Steve Chassis joins me up here, but he was injured in an Indianapolis car race over the weekend. And joining me is the other Steve here in the central Indiana area, Steve Butler. Back at Claremont, Indiana for the Hardy's Deluxe Racing Series, this is the Loctite Chris Liner Van's USAC Sprint Car Division from Indianapolis Raceway Park. Because I'm going to be driving that car again soon. Okay, this is the last lap before green. Gary, how about your selection for tonight? I will take young Jeff Gordon because Gordon has the old ride that Jack Hewitt was driving a few weeks ago. So I'll take Jeff. He was the second quick qualifier this evening. Well, we've got a sort of a partial vote for Fidoa, don't we? We have a vote for Gordon. Hammond has won recently. I'm going to go with somewhat of a sentimental choice. Yeah, I agree. It's hard to pick against Vogler, but I think that Doug Hebron, starting from the outside pole, may have his best chance. I think a real key for Hebron is taking care of that right rear tire. We've got a green flag, and the race is underway. And there goes Hammond down on the inside. Hello, car number 2B is Gene Lee Gibson. Right ahead, there's the orange number 23 of young Jeff Gordon, the high school graduate of this May. And Hammond kind of squirts through on the inside and moves into the third position, riding once again with Jack Hewitt. It looks, it looks like Jack's got a bit of a push going into the turn. You can see him turn his wheels into the inside, and he, and he has to get out of the gas there, and the other cars are pulling away from him a little bit. So see, he's turning the wheels to the inside. It's pushing just a little bit. He didn't have to get off the gas that time, though, so maybe he's getting the hang of it from uh, Hammond that way. Lee Gibson continues to lead that uh, yellow and red number two that you just saw there of Gene Lee Gibson is running in fourth and uh, he has kind of slithered away from Greg Staub, Jeff Gordon and Rich Vogler. Now we're back with uh, the eighth running Jack Hewitt. Yeah we just saw Jack get a big push again there in the third and fourth turn and he had to get out of the gas and, and uh, I think Mark Alderson went right by on the inside so 
There goes Jeff Gordon now. Jeff Gordon. Gordon gets very sideways between turns three and four. Staub uh, slips by, and uh, Vogler looks like he's got an opportunity, but no, Gordon closes that door, so Vogler definitely exercises a little bit of discretion there. Yeah, Jeff is really driving hard, and I think that uh, Greg is holding him up a little bit, and they're both drivers uh, are really anxious to get past him and get a shot at the leaders. You know, the longer they have to follow Staub, the uh, harder it's going to be to catch up and have a chance at winning the race. Here goes Vogler on the inside. Just six laps to go, and you see some on-burnt fuel uh, coming out of the exhaust header of Jeff Gordon's car. He's the only car letting that out tonight. Yeah, it must be a little bit of the way that he's got the fuel injection uh, adjusted on. He goes for the dive boot. There, there goes Vogler. It's a double dive. Double dive going into <laughs> turn number three. Gordon got sideways midway through the corner as Emily Vogler, Rich Vogler's wife, looks on. And Vogler has still not gotten around Jeff Gordon. No, two great racers here racing side by side. Vogler looks like he's getting a pretty good angle on him, though. This could be it. Rich dive is in, dives in low and slides out in front of him. That's well, the, a classic pass. The Butler dive is a single one on this lap. The top 10, the man who started in the outside, or on the outside of the front row, Doug Hebron continues to lead. Gary Fido has moved up to second. Wayne Hammond is in third. The first two drivers have never won a USAC sprint car feature. Gene Lee Gibson is in fourth. Rich Vogler is now running in fifth position after a great battle with the sixth running, Jeff Gordon. Eric Gordon, no relation, is seventh. Mark Alderson is eighth. Greg Staub is ninth. And David Harrison has moved up to tenth back to the green flag and going into turn number one a big spin of Wayne Hammond who triggered that he was the first one to go around I saw at least one other car go hard into the outside wall I think it's and Vogler at, and at this point it's just impossible to tell who everybody involved in Wayne Vogler. Hammond was the first car and you think Vogler might have been yes, involved? Vogler's up there Wayne Hammond and uh, and car number eight that must be Larry Fritz that's Larry Fritz and okay here's what it looks like in the replay Steve see what you can find out as we look at this Okay, it looks like uh, it looks like Gene Lee ran into the back of uh, of uh, Hammond and started him spinning. You can definitely see a jolt there, and he started spinning. And then uh, here comes Larry Fritz. Now we don't see what happens to Vogler. You know, Vogler seemed to be in a separate incident. Vogler, I think, might have gotten involved in Wayne Hammond when Hammond went around. I saw which uh, Rich shooting through here. Now let's watch for Vogler in the uh, white number 69. Here's Vogler up. Up ahead. There's Vogler in the yeah. center of the racetrack. Yeah, Vogler hits the left front of okay. Gene Lee. Yeah, Gene and Lee that's is what caught, starts him. Gene Lee is caught between Hammond and Vogler. Rich goes up and hits the outside wall, breaks off that right front wheel. He hit very hard. Then he goes and hits. Oh, well, that's first, second, and third again. It is Hebron, Bidoa, and Gene Lee Gibson. Yeah, but here comes Jeff Gordon, and he's going to come up there and make it a four way battle, Larry. go Larry it looks like Gene Lee's got it uh, pretty well in hand he's got a pretty good lead and Doug Heron looks like he's in pretty good shape in second so uh, we have to see if Jeff Gordon can get past Gary Fidoa for that third place position yeah Jeff has been uh, following Gary Fidoa for about the last 10 or 12 laps and the cars look like they're chained together almost perfectly matched yeah you know Jeff looks like he, uh, he gets in on him a little bit uh, going into three but uh, Gary looks real good coming off the turn Gene Lee Gibson is approaching uh, slower traffic as he moves underneath Jerry Niemeyer. Jerry moves over and allows the leader to go underneath. Uh, Gene Lee Gibson getting by unscathed. He uh, squirts out going down the backstretch. Uh, Fidoa moved in just a little bit. There goes bit. Jeff Gordon around the outside of Fidoa. The lap traffic is a factor. He's getting squeezed between Fidoa and the lap traffic. So Gibson wins it. Coming home in second is Gene Lee Gibson in third goes to or make that uh, Hebron of course is second third going to Fidoa and fourth to Jeff Gordon
the feature lineup, the 1989 Holman Classic, and here is the lineup. Starting on the inside of row number one, a two-time former champion of this division, Gary Bettenhausen. The two-time defending champion is on the outside. In row number two, Jeff Gordon and Mark Alderson. In row number three, side-by-side, side, Gary Fido and Rich Bogler, the fastest qualifiers. In the fourth row, Wayne Hammond, a feature winner earlier, and Greg Staub. In the fifth row, David Harrison and Jerry Niemeyer. In row number six are cars numbered eight and 93, Jim Mahoney and Frank Weiss. And in the seventh row are John Murphy and Jim Mola, 73 and 30. In the eighth row, Kevin Huntley and Dave Dernwald. In the ninth row, Jack Hewitt and Tim Champlin. And the tenth and final row is Eric Gordon in car number 75 and Bob Fry in car number 20. You will see this year's Holman Classic live after these words. This is a race that absolutely is up is the 19th annual Tony Holman Classic. This used to be a dirt race and now it's a pavement race and this race really could go to anybody in that field. Steve, do you have a feeling as to who might be strong tonight? You know, how can you guess? You got Bettenhausen, Jeff Gordon, Butler, Alderson, Vogler, uh, Fidewa, Hammond, it's great stuff. How, how do you choose from that? Green flag. The two-time and defending champion Steve Butler takes the early lead. Steve Butler has had a season he would just as soon forget. He could really turn things around emotionally for himself if he were to win here tonight. You're riding with Floridian Wayne Hammond. It's a great race. Very, very competitive race. Oh! It's Bettenhausen on fire. Fire is still going on, Gary. It's a fuel fire, but no, it's an oil fire. There's a lot of smoke out of it. He's unloading. He's up out of the car. Gary Benton. He's out on the ground. Out and the car continues to uh, go on its own. It's coming to a stop inside of turn number two, although it is still rolling approximately about five miles an hour. It stops now still on. No, but it's just pouring oil fire out the back. Now it's got another gulp of oil coming back in to catch on fire. He's already unbuckled his, his belt. He's looking for a way out of this thing. He's standing up, steering it, you just see his barely hanging come on. Up, yep. He steers it off the, the little... racetrack. Oh, yeah, he's, he steered it off the racetrack. Did a great job, and all he wanted to do was make sure he was clear and get out of the car. Bails off the top to the back gainer. I'd give him about a, about a four <laughs> on a dismount. Not too good. Another aspiring young open wheel driver is 18-year-old Jeff Gordon. He and CRA Sprint Car Drivers are back for their second consecutive appearance on the pavement at Mesa Marin Speedway. Now, the top eight were inverted for the feature, and so Jeff, who began his racing career in California four years ago, got the break he needed, starting from the pole. The fun part of the race was watching Vogler thread his way through traffic. He passed all but Jeff, and at the end of 30 laps was four seconds behind. I had a pretty good idea coming through traffic that Rich is probably behind me. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't about to let him find out if anybody was there. I just kept it going as fast as I could because this is sprint car racing. It's, you know, it's not a deal where you got to set a pace. You really got to go for it the whole way. Payment sprint car racing appears to be making a comeback. CRA President Frank Lewis says at least 10 of his races next year will be on pavement. Top event on the program tonight, the Winfield Sprint Car International. Up the front is the American Jeff Gordon. Beside him, George Tatnell, Sid Moore, Gary Rush, Brooke Tatnell, Colin Farr. Stand by for the start.
was just taking his time, but Jeff Gordon came at the start very quickly. A bunch up. Gordon and Tatnall in front row, Sidmore and Gary Rush, Brooke Tatnall and Colin Farge here to top class. Top of the green. Coming into the acceleration zone a lot more slowly this time. sensation in the United States is the ham in the capital sandwich at the moment. And George Tatton out front. Jeff Ford second. Brooks Tatton third. Sid Moore fourth. Danny Smith, the other American fifth. And Brad Hayward running sixth. The interest is still the two Tatnels, the two wing wheel cars up front, where George Tatnell has a lead of around about 15 metres, which seems to be just frustrating at Brooke Tatnell at the moment. He just can't close them. Now he can close the gap. George Tatnell leads while Brooke Tatnell made a mess and gone. Brooke Tatnell's gone. He struck a problem. George Tatnell, the leader. This allows Gordon to go off into second place. And Danny Smith has gone up into third spot. What an incredible performance by the pit crew of the two Lander Toyota Dennis Fast Sprinters. Yeah. Jeff Gordon and Danny Smith, they both did drive lines and drive trains. They worked feverishly to get them started. We first of all had a pit message that said they weren't going to make it. Desperation came and they made it. And now those three fast sprinters are running second, third and fourth at the moment. With George Tatnell, Jeff Gordon, Danny Smith, Colin Farr, and Sid Moore. Set to go for the restart. Can Tatnell hold off the Americans? The green flag waves. Tatnell, Jeff Gordon, and Danny Smith. Colin Farr and Sid Moore. I definitely think the winner's going to come from the top three. And with six to go, and George Tatnell getting the chance to bet in again, he's going to be very hard to catch. George Tatnell, the leader. From Jeff Gordon and Danny Smith and Colin Farber. What a great performance by the crews to get these Lander Toyota Sprinters going again after having troubles earlier tonight. There's only four laps remaining for George Tatnell. Four laps away from the field. And he's starting to move away from the Americans now. Jeff Gordon and Danny Smith. Been a good drive by Danny Smith too. He was well down the pack for a while and then started to come home strongly. Two and a half laps to go at the motorbone circuit. Two and a half laps away from victory for George Tatnell. But it's Tatnell followed by Jeff Gordon, Danny Smith. Brad Haywood's really come from nowhere over this last half dozen laps. Yellow. And the race has been declared. The winner will be George Tatnell. The USA 3 of Jeff Gordon is second. The USA 1 of Danny Smith will be third. And the 47 of Brad Hayward will be fourth. George Tatnell, the winner. Second place tonight. Second place tonight in our Winfield Sprint Car International has gone to the American Jeff Gordon. Congratulations, Jeff, on taking out second place. You were brand new to us here tonight. We were uh, an unknown quantity, but you've certainly shown us your talent. We heard quite a lot about you from the States. You've shown that tonight, and I, uh, I think it's been an outstanding performance. One, new to the track, and two, having some problems with that car. Yeah, we didn't really uh, have too much time to check it out. Uh, we just kind of got it as close as we could and just rolled it out and that that might hurt us a little bit but George drove a good race and uh, he was going really good and uh, you know I give him credit for that.
That's your first night at the Motodrome, second place in the feature. I think we can look forward to bigger and better things for you for the rest of the season. Oh, I hope so. Uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm starting to get a little bit more used to the, this car, and uh, it's starting to feel pretty good to me, so I, I think uh, we can really get it going even better. Congratulations on second place tonight. Thank you. And third place tonight has gone to the other, the other American, Danny Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, Danny, on your third place. I thought for a moment there that you were having some more troubles in that feature, but you really started to come on strong mid-stages of the race. Yeah, we was looking pretty good, and uh, we had that restart a few laps ago, and uh, a brake line come off, so we just kind of ride around and finish third. So you know, we broke a, a drive line in that uh, Super 8 Trophy Dash, or whatever it's called. And, and so uh, you know, we were lucky to finish third tonight. Well, I reckon it's been a marvellous performance. We actually got news from Pitts, first of all, that you were not going to even make the feature because of the driveline problems you were having. So it was great to see you in the feature. Then both of you run one, two, or two, three. Yeah, we, a lot of guys pitched in and gave us a hand. We had to had the whole driveline out and scatter it all over the pits. And uh, Bobby Blacklaw and, and, and all the guys on the crew and a bunch of others, I don't even know, pitched in and gave us a hand and got us going again. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you back here at the Motodrome. All right. Thanks for having us. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Our Winfield Sprint Car International won by George Tatnell, the Americans Jeff Gordon and Danny Smith finishing second and third to wrap up the first of our Super Speedway specials over Christmas. From me down trackside, I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.